In this one we're going to talk about sets. This is a data type in Python, named so because it deals with set theory. And don't worry, you don't need a degree in maths to deal with this. I've always been terrible at maths and still made a perfectly good developer. So let's get right into it. Okay, here I have set A, set B and maybe set C. At the bottom of this large script I have a print temp. So everything I do here is going to be put in temp so it prints out. If we run this now we're going to get a set of A, a set of B and a set of C. You can create sets using curly brackets which is like a dictionary but without the values to the keys. And then for set B we're creating it using the set command on a list which will convert it to a set. And then in set C we're going to try and create it with squirrely brackets. So let's run this and check the types of them. You can see that the first two are indeed sets. The last one is a dictionary. And that's because Python will always assume you're doing a dictionary if you do squirrely brackets with nothing in them. If you want to create an empty set then you do set like that and now you'll have three sets. Okay, what is special about sets? The first thing to know about sets is they're unordered and so are not subscriptable. The other thing is that they are not able to store duplicate values. So if we take out this thing here and run it, you'll see that when set A is created, even though it's got all these numbers in it, you're only getting the individual numbers that do not overlap. You'll also notice that when we built the set, it's ignored that order and created its own. Sets do not just have to store numbers, however, they can also store letters. So if we override the set here, you'll see the letters now in there, again, not in the order. And if we keep running this, you'll actually find that the order of those letters change. It's not just numbers and characters you can store, you can store anything that is immutable. If we run it here for a tuple, you'll see that the tuple gets stored. However, you cannot store mutable values, so if we change this to a list, you will get an error. The error we get is unhashable type list. Now this can be a bit confusing. What's unhashable got to do with what we're storing in the value? Well, like dictionaries, all keys, even in a set, must have a hashable value, and only mutable things in Python are hashable. What do we mean by not subscriptable? Well, we get rid of this, and I then put this on. We're now looking for the first element of set A. We'll also get an error. Set object is not subscriptable. So we can't get things back out in the way we can with lists or dictionaries. Okay, some general stuff. Whilst the things within a set are immutable, you can actually add to a set. So our first set here, if we add six, and actually I need to put that back in, you'll see that six was added to the set. We can also clear the set like we can a list and that will go back to an empty set. We can also remove from a set. Although if I try and remove a key that doesn't exist, such as six, because I haven't added it yet, we'll get an error, key error, just like you would in a dictionary. We can just prove that it does remove if it exists with a five and you'll see it's gone down to four. Okay, there is a safe way of removing from a list if you don't know the values in there, and that is discard. If we run discard, nothing will change. It's also important to note that you can also pop from a list, although you're not guaranteed to get what you expect. So this is a bit of a weird implementation in my eyes. And you can check if something is in a list, and you'll see that four is true. And if we try six, we'll get false. Now do note that looking up values in a set is way, way faster than looking them up in a list. So sometimes it can pay to convert a list to a set if it contains lots of values that you need to search through. The other thing to note is that sets are iterable. That means we can loop over them. So for number in set A, print num. And if we run this, you'll see we get one, two, three, four, five. You can also do set comprehension, which would be very, very similar. Okay, now we get onto the set theory operations. Intersection allows you to see where the values in two sets overlap. So if we go back up to our example, we got one, two, three, four, five in set A, and we got four, five, six, seven, eight in set B. Four and five overlaps, none of the other numbers do. So if we go back to our intersection, so this is set A dot intersection with set B, and you'll see four and five shows. Now, not only is there a method to do this, but there's also an operator. And that operator is the ampersand. So if we do set A, ampersand, set B, this will do exactly the same thing and show you the intersection. Another thing you can do is to create a set from two other sets. And to do this, you use union. This will give you a non-duplicated set of values from both set A and set B. So this should count all the way from one to eight with no duplicates. Let's give it a try and it works. The set operator is the pipe symbol. And of course, there is the method, which will give you exactly the same value. Okay, the next is difference. You can find the difference between one set and another. 
This is really great for validation of field and things like that, where you expect a certain number to be entered, you know their names, and then you can check what's been entered in a function to match those. I probably explained that really badly, but needless to say, this should give us one, two, three, I think. Yep, it does. Because four and five duplicate. So the difference between set A and set B is one and two and three. The operator for difference is minus, and we have exactly the same thing here, but with the method value, which will return one, two, three again. The next thing you can do is find all the places that the sets do not interact. So this will return all the numbers that do not lie in the middle of the Venn diagram. And the operator for this is like a little up arrow hat thing. So if we run this, you'll see one, two, three, four and five is missing because it intersects and six, seven, eight is shown. And the way to do this if it has a method is symmetric difference. The other thing a set is good for is to tell you where things sort of interact. So if we take set B and change it to one, two, three, we can then check to see if B is a subset of A. And if we run that, it's true. And that's because one, two, three is wholly encompassed in A. We can also check if A is a superset of B, which is the opposite of a subset. And you can see that that's true. The other thing we can do is to check if A and B are disjointed, i.e. they have no intersection. So if we run this, it should say false because they do overlap. Now, if we change set to be six, seven, eight without the overlap and run it again, we'll get true because six, seven, eight does not overlap with one, two, three, four, five. Now, a really cool way of using sets is to dedupe a list. So if we wanted to dedupe a list, we'd have our list here, which is basically a copy of our set, but as a list. We then have L2, which is our list we're going to build into. We're going to loop through L1. And if the value of X is not in L2, we're going to append it to L2. And if we print out the temp L2, you'll see that we have a deduped list. And we got one, two, three, four, five. This can all be replaced with a single line of code. And the way we can do this is to convert L1 to a set. This automatically dedupes it. And then we can wrap that in a list to convert it back to a list type. And you'll see we have a deduped list, which was dead quick. Now do note that as sets run ordered, your conversion to a set and then back to a list will not maintain the order. So do be careful. Not that you would really need the order because you're stripping stuff out anyway. In this one, we learn all about sets and the power that they hold. Rounding off the subject of types in Python, in the next video top left, we're going to talk all about type annotations, what they are and why you should definitely look at using them. And with that, thank you for watching and I hope to catch you on the next one.